Hello everyone, this is Magda Castaneda, Certified Nephrology Nurse from Utopia Health Career Center, and we offer a hemodialysis program approved by Bonnet. And I am here today because I want to invite you to our new orientation, which is going to be next week on Thursday, October 26th. The new training starts in January, but we are uh, open and it's open enrollment and we have an orientation next week, October 26th at 6.30 p.m. So during our class, we cover a lot of topics. So you go to the dialysis centers and you are basically a super technician because you know a lot about different topics. And one of the topics that I want to cover here today is about aneurysms and pseudoaneurysms. So right here, I have it. What is the difference between an aneurysm and a pseudoaneurysm? So let's start with that. In order for you un to understand what is a, an aneurysm and what is a pseudoaneurysm, you need to know that in dialysis, for hemodialysis, we have three different types of accesses, vascular accesses. Today, I'm going to talk about two of them. We have a fistula, and we have a graft, okay? So with the fistulas, what happens is that the vein is connected to an artery. So it'll be something like this. A vein is connected to an artery, okay? This is with the fistula. With the graft, we have a piece of synthetic material, and that is connected, one end is connected to an artery, and the other end is connected to a vein, okay? So we have two connections here. Okay, so today during our class for the students that we have going right now, um, the class that we're, we have going right now with the student, with the current students, we were covering, we were talking about this. We were talking about aneurysms and pseudoaneurysms. So in the fistula, aneurysm is related to fistulas, okay? We call it aneurysm in hemodialysis when it happens to a fistula. And an aneurysm is a ballooning, okay? A ballooning of the vessel. So in this case, an aneurysm would look something like this, okay? So this right here would be an aneurysm. So why does this happen? It happens when we stick the fistula or the vessel with a sharp needle it, around the same area for multiple times, okay? That is something else. There is something else called one-sideitis. That will create that. So what happens is that the wall of the vessel weakens, and as the flow goes by, it creates this ballooning, okay? So again, if the ballooning happens on a fistula, it's called an aneurysm. And let me show you. I'm going to go ahead and show you a fistula with an aneurysm. I'm showing you. I'm going to add this. This is a fistula with an aneurysm. Okay. So in this picture, let me move it to the side for a minute. Okay. So in that picture that you see on your screen, that is the fistula that the wall of the vessel has been weakened and the flow of the blood passing through it has made the, the, the wall of the vessel balloon out like that, okay? So when you see a patient on dialysis that has a fistula this big, it means that this patient has an aneurysm, okay? So let me go ahead and remove that image from the screen. Okay, so now... Let's talk about the pseudoaneurysm. Pseudoaneurysm refers to the ballooning 
but when it happens in a graft, if the patient has a graft. So in this case, here in the graft, which is a synthetic material, the tissues of the patient just surrounds the graft. So what happens is this. This is a tissue. There is a layer. There is a layer of tissue, red blood cells, white blood cells that's created on top of the graft. Okay? So when we stick the patient multiple times around the same area, that t tissue just weakens and forms a balloon. So it's something like this. Okay? So the ballooning, it's not the graph itself. It would be the tissue that is surrounding the graph. That's why it's called pseudo. Pseudo, pseudo, pseudo means false. So it's basically like a false aneurysm because it's not really happening in the vessel, but it's happening in the tissue that is surrounding the graph at that moment, okay? And let me show you, let me show you an image of a pseudoaneurysm. This is an image of a pseudoaneurysm. I know it doesn't look very nice. Let me move it to this side. I know it doesn't look very nice, but that's how the pseudoaneurysm looks, and it's underneath the skin. So if you look closely, you can see where the white strings are. Those white strings are holding the graph. You can see the graph right there underneath, okay? And then you see that ball that comes, that rounded piece of tissue that comes above that graph. That is the pseudoaneurysm, which is this, this right here, okay? Uh, sometimes the patient has to go in, and this is something that could be removed by surgery. And then the surgeon takes a look at the graph and makes sure that the graph is still good to use. And then we, w we could continue to use the graph. But sometimes we cannot continue to use the graph, and then we have to abandon that area, that axis, and then the patient will have a new axis um, built. Okay, so this is, let me take this all out. So those are aneurysms. Let me show you, let me show you a picture of another aneurysm. So this also is an aneurysm. So that, oops, wait a minute. Okay, here we go. That's an aneurysm right there. Okay. This is also an aneurysm. This right there is an aneurysm. So in dialysis, we want to make sure that we stay away from the aneurysms. We don't, we don't stick the aneurysm in the top. In this case, if I would have to stick this, uh, an axis like this, if I would have to stick an axis like this, I probably would look at something somewhere around the base, not here. Because you see how shiny it is? That means if you poke it there, it's go it could rupture, okay? It could rupture. So I would go probably around the base, somewhere around the base, if we can still use it. If we do rupture an aneurysm, there are a couple of things that can happen. The patient can bleed out to death, right? And this is a ruptured aneurysm. Look at this. This is a ruptured aneurysm. This can happen. Okay? This is a ruptured pseudoaneurysm or a graft. Okay? This is happening in a graft. This one right here. So it's basically not really a ruptured aneurysm. It's more, just to clarify that, is more the the axis, the exit site where the needle goes, that is um, ruptured. So it's more a rupture in the skin and possibly a rupture in the in our graft. Okay, and if those things happen, we probably have to apply a tourniquet for this patient, and this patient probably has to go through surgery. 
So here we go. Wait a minute. Here we go. That is a ruptured, I hope you can see that well. That is a ruptured um, uh, fistula, ruptured vascular axis. And in this case, a tourniquet had to be created in order to stop the bleeding, okay? Both of these cases basically will end up in surgery, okay? So that's the difference between an aneurysm and a pseudoaneurysm. Hopefully you understood. This is something that we cover in our hemodialysis training program. So I, we have an orientation again, and it's next week, Thursday, October 26th. It's at 6.30 p.m., Come on, come out. Uh, we will be waiting for you here. There's a link. There's a link in the description that you can click on if you want more information, information about cost and all that is in that link. So go ahead and click the link. You register. You can register so that you can receive. We can send you an email with all the information, okay? You will receive the information right away, but you gotta register and let us know what's your email so that we can send that information out. And that link is www.utopiahcc.com forward slash hemodialysis. So go ahead there, click, click on the link, Enter your name, your email, and I will send you an email with the class information right away. So I want to say thank you for being here, and I want to say hi to Beatriz, to Yolanda, to Maria, Marcos, and Jelly. Okay, so, and those are the only ones I see right now. If you're watching the repetition uh, of this video, or, yes, the repeat of the video, I say hi. And I hope you like the video, and I hope it's useful and that you can learn a lot from all this information that I am um, posting here. Okay, so see you soon. Come to the orientation. You can also call us. The, the, the phone number is on the description. Okay, 407-962-0299. See you soon. Bye.